What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's a beautiful day today, December 2nd, about 60 degrees. I wanted to take you all along, show you what we got growing in the greenhouse and what me and Tuck do on a beautiful day like this. Let's go. Before we get into the greenhouse, I wanted to show you growers the new food forest that I put in last spring. The reason I want to do this is because a number of you have also. Now that we're almost getting into winter, you're looking at your garden and it doesn't look like you've done much. But I'm here to tell you those investments will soon pay off. Where I'm standing out now in the seven year old food forest. This is what you could have. Just a couple years makes a huge difference. So stay encouraged, stick with it, keep planting and keep investing because I promise it will make a difference. Let's head into the greenhouse. At this time of year is when most gardeners hang their tools up and take a break. Not me and Tuck though. And I encourage you guys not to do so also. To go out and take advantage of beautiful days like this. It reminds me of a story I heard about two salesmen, and it was a cold, rainy day. The one salesman woke up and, and he said, with weather like this, they can't expect you to go out and make sales, so he stays home. The other salesman wakes up and says, with weather like this, it's a great day to go out and make sales. Probably everyone's home, especially the salesman. So I think that's the difference, you know, to have that ability to go out there, to push when other people aren't, to really take advantage of those opportunities and situations so you can be great not for pride's sake, but to be able to do great things and contribute to others. Let's step into the greenhouse. As we step into the greenhouse, the first thing you'll notice that's kind of peculiar is we're growing things in the ground this year, right directly into the ground. And one of the reasons I'm doing that is something I showed you guys previously, how I've got this heated wire that I'm running along the base of the whole greenhouse. And what that does is help heat up the ground and help keep the, heat those bricks up. So when the cold starts trying to creep in, we're gonna try to hold that back. You can see things are growing pretty well in here. These peas are doing nicely. These beans are doing nicely. We've got some rare varieties in here. All the stuff that I planted in here were from that seed uh, pack and all that different huge jeer seed collection that I got from one of our friends, Richard, who sent it to us for free. It was such a blessing. But we've got a number of different things growing in here. We've got some, uh, some things in pots, like some Swiss chard and stuff. We've got some uh, mizuna, some purple mizuna in here, some tat soy some different kinds of kale and just a lot of fun things and things aren't growing super fast just because the time of year it is uh, we're not getting a lot of sunlight in here but things are still growing we're having fun doing it and tuck likes coming and walking around in here we got to be careful though because he crushes some of the things when he walks over them so things are growing relatively well like i said a little slow but we're having fun and i'll continue to bring you guys along the only thing is just there's not that much happening right now so let's step out into the garden and get some work done. Here's something I added a few years ago and I'm hoping to get some good production out of it this year. You can see how winter hardy it is. I planted it underneath our gooseberries. This is a carpet raspberry. You can see it sprawling along the ground. So there's emerald carpet raspberry. I've never eaten it before, so I can't tell you you should or shouldn't grow it, but I'll bring you along as we hopefully get from some fruit from it this year. As I step out of the greenhouse though and tucks out here walking around, I notice things are, things are messy along the ground. There's a lot of things that I wanna come through pull some things out because I just am not happy with the level of production we're getting and also I want to make a change. When you have a food forest like this, sometimes change is a good thing. I heard someone say, if you want things to change, the only thing that'll happen is if you step in and you make the change. So if you want things to change for you, you gotta change or you gotta be the one that steps in and makes that. So we're gonna come through, we're gonna cut some things out to open up more light to other things do a little pruning as the season progresses, and I'll bring you guys along for that. I think it'll be a lot of fun, but let's start getting our hands dirty. One thing about working in the garden is I don't want to do all of it myself. If I can have the chickens help, let's do that. So I'm going to guide them into the food forest, allow them to do some scratching, and do some work for me. And we'll have fun all together doing it. Come on, girls. The first thing I want to do is remove a number of these raspberries. Although they're excelling and doing real well, I'm not getting the level of production that I really want out of them. And also, the understory has almost been taken over by a lot of these raspberries. And that's just not what I want because honestly, it's not convenient to walk around through here and get scraped up. So I really, really love strawberries underneath my trees. That's what we're gonna go for more of. So I'm actually gonna be pulling some of these out, not even just pruning them. These are fall bearing raspberries, which could be ever bearing too. So if you have fall bearing or ever bearing raspberries, the way to prune those would be to just cut them down at ground level 
as low as you can. What that will do is give you a nice big fall harvest. If you want both harvests, what you would do is just leave these essentially and they'll be fruiting out the sides in the spring. But instead of that, we're just gonna go with removing a lot of them, just like we removed this tree, because in this food forest, now that the trees have gotten so large, I've reduced a lot of my opportunity to grow some of my annuals and add in some of my more bushes and stuff. So by removing this, we're gonna open up a lot of space, a lot of light. When you grow in wood chips too, and your soil is loose, it's easy to pull this stuff out. Some of you might be wondering if I could share some of these raspberries with people. I definitely could, but in my opinion, the better way to share the raspberries is to get the new plants once they come up in the spring. Those are the ones that are gonna really excel and transplant a lot better than these. I'm gonna make sure when I'm removing these that I'm shaking off all this good soil because it truly is good soil. And we actually have Tuck locked out of the garden for now because he just gets a little too crazy with the chickens when they're in here with me. So we'll leave him out just for a little bit and then soon we'll have him back in here helping us out. I came home like a stone and I fell heavy into your arms these days of dust which we've known will blow away with this new sun Another thing I've noticed over time is when I first put these raspberries in, they did a lot better than they did now. So I think over time, as a result of kind of like the same raspberries growing and reproducing, the strongest ones took over, which actually has simplified the system and reduced my genetics, which I'm not too happy with. So by removing some of these, I'll be able to add some different varieties that I really want and stay on top of it better because that's just what happens sometimes in a food forest. Over time, the strongest things take over and it becomes more simplified. You'll notice all these leaves on the ground. This is all from the hazelnuts. So this system is actually helping to fertilize itself, helping to sustain and maintain itself. A sustainable system is really any system that produces more energy than it takes in its lifetime to create down and maintain. Down, wait for now. As I continue mixing this stuff up, You'll notice the ground's getting mixed, the chickens are getting curious. When I finish this section, I'm sure they'll move over, start doing their work, grabbing the bugs, hopefully getting some of those cuculio out of here as well, which is a plum cuculio, which is a pest actually, that attacks a lot of our fruit, not our fruit trees, but the particular fruit. If you have been following the channel for a while, you know these chickens. These three here, and also my other one, Tommy, she's outside, Tommy girl. These have been around with me for about five years or so. They're definitely not producing as many eggs as when I first had them, but they're not really for production anymore. They're not only pets and friends, they are also workers in the garden, and they've earned their retirement, as I like to say. So these years, they're kind of just living out their retirement, spending time in the food forest, free ranging in the yard, and just loving life feels good to be able to provide a home for the chickens and a good life. So break my step and relent Will you forgive and I won't forget Know what we've seen in him with less Now in some way Some of you may be like skeptical, thinking why the heck would you remove this stuff? Like I said, sometimes it, you want a little bit of a change. This is gonna open up so much light, so much area for me to grow annuals, add new perennials, things I've always wanted to try. Maybe a small tree here or something. One thing you'll notice is how dark this soil has become. So this was all sand when I first planted it, but from getting the wood chips down and, and really from having the years of breaking down, it's soft, it's got a lot of life in it, it's got worms always working in there, and the chickens love the worms. Forests will like this one.
you can see we're taking a lot of these raspberries out of here. One thing I want you to notice on these roots of these raspberries right here is the fungus. See, I believe that's probably the mycorrhizal association. Got a lot of fungus, and where you're gonna get a lot of that is from getting the wood chips down. You can see some of these with the white roots and the white hairs all around it. That's what we like to say. I won't be composting these, it'll just take too long to break down. I'm just gonna have to remove them off the property, just like some of these asparagus that I mentioned because the asparagus beetle is harbored inside the asparagus spears. So we don't wanna have those overwintering and then coming up and attacking our asparagus come spring. Although something like this, like I mentioned, isn't probably the most popular thing to do. I wanted to bring you all along for it because this is part of the process. If you guys are enjoying the video, let me know in the comment section, hit the like button, and also hit that notification bell if you wanna follow along on a new video I'm working on where I'm gonna be showing you guys where I order my seeds, why I choose the ones I do, and things like that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. On this section, I'm trying to, gonna try to be really careful because you can see under here, this is what I want it more of. Look at the strawberries underneath this tree. This is kinda more of an ideal section how I'd like to have it, but if I allow these raspberries, they're gonna be coming through and shading out a lot of these strawberries. We don't want that to happen. Strawberries are one of my favorite things to grow. You can never have too many strawberries. I've noticed that there's been times where I've had extra raspberries that I that I haven't stood on top of harvesting. It never happened with strawberries. It's what a strong use my head alongside my heart. We got a bunch of the raspberries out. Now I'm gonna work on this other asparagus patch. I showed you guys just the other day how to overwinter your asparagus patch. That's what we're gonna be doing here. Same concept. Look how thick these asparagus are here though. You can see we invested a lot of time in allowing it to photosynthesize and grow a lot on the top, which is gonna make big healthy roots down low. So come this spring, we should have a nice harvest and be able to harvest these over a number of weeks. When it comes to harvesting your asparagus too, is you wanna come out here like almost every day because they grow super quick once they're in production. So tame my flesh and fix my eyes. I tear the night free from the lies. You'll notice the red Falco pruners too. I'll do a video on my favorite pruners and why if you want to see that as well. We always have a lot of ideas going into the winter and video ideas. We just don't know which ones to go with sometimes. There's only so much time. Fortunately, these are light. You can see though, as you look in here, even with this, the amount of photosynthesis, the amount of conversion from solar energy into biomass we've created. And that's really the idea. The more fertility you can grow. Even though we're moving this off the property, it's still amazing to see how much biomass you can create how much food you can create and grow. One thing about Tuck is he loves coming along for the ride. So we can only keep him out of the garden so long. We're gonna see how he does with the chickens. Sometimes he's a little crazy, but I think he'll be okay now that the chickens have a lot of stuff to work on. I'm gonna cover up the asparagus with some black leaf mulch and then some wood chips as well and make sure it's okay with Tuck. And as you can see underneath this pear tree as well, this is a nice section where we've got some lemon balm growing, a nice herb, and also a lot of strawberries. That's what we like to see. A bunch of strawberries under there. I wanna make sure that this is all gonna be okay with Tuck. So we'll ch let him check it out, smell everything, see if everything's gone well. Then we'll get this black leaf mulch down. I've got this black leaf mulch in here and it rained so it's a little wet, but that's okay. I'm gonna dump it over top. And this is where we have a lot of fun. We get to play with mud. So cover this section. Give this nice fertilizer and covering for the asparagus. I then just cover the section with some more wood chips. Another reason I like growing things like asparagus under the trees or strawberries is the different roots. So strawberries have very, very 
top roots, everything's gonna be growing on the surface. So it's not gonna obstruct any of your, uh, any of your fruit tree growth or any of those roots like that. Asparagus on the other hand, deep, long, shoot all the way down into the ground. Again, occupying a different section of the root zone than the trees. Now that we got that covered, I'm gonna cut some of this lemon balm down to ground level. And this is a perennial, so it'll be coming back. Then I'm gonna remove some more of the raspberries and stuff, other sections. I'm still gonna leave some raspberries. I just don't want as many growing as I have. And Tuck found an old carrot root. That one was one that flowered. So he's, <laughs> he dug that one to himself. I don't think it's a good one. We'll have to find him a better carrot. Let's actually go grab one real quick. Now we're gonna cut out this lemon balm like I was about to do. Just down to ground level. And this will come back from the roots. I love this perennial. And we've got a number of other perennials that we'll do the same thing for. This is kind of a standard practice. And again, maybe not the most exciting things, but all necessary if you wanna make sure you're getting a good harvest in. The nice thing about this is it still smells so good. And if you want, you could leave these, shake them out, or put them under a tree somewhere if you wanted to uh, grow more of them because there's a lot of seeds mixed into here. And so it goes. And there will always be stop and go and fast and slow and action, reaction, sticks and stones of broken bones. Those for peace and those for war and God bless these ones. You'll notice while they're young and they're small or while they're low here, they're catching a lot of the leaves, holding it, and mulching themselves, which is convenient. I'll also come through in sections that the wood chips aren't deep and re-wood chip them. Put another thick layer of wood chips, especially in sections where we are really low and we're not growing any annuals or anything. And as we dig down, we can see why we're going to do that because we're constantly building incredible soil. And I showed you, or I'll show you guys how we're just all sand, but when you got this going, you got the worms working for you. As I dug that section, I just saw a little worm try to escape. A couple of them, as you'll see here. So this is just one section we're digging up. And we're finding worms everywhere. If in that one little section, I've got two worms, just think about how many worms we've got in this whole entire garden. That's why you gotta have the system and nature work for you. When nature's working for you, you have to do less work. It makes it a lot easier. I've talked about it many multiple times, but if you're working against nature, you've gotta fill all those gaps, do all the extra things that nature is doing. So me and Tuck are gonna continue to get some stuff down, doing a lot of the same things I just showed you, removing some raspberries, removing some other stuff, but making sure we're having a lot of fun while we're doing it, because that's part of it. If you can't enjoy it, then in my opinion, there's no point in really even doing it. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got a little inspired to take advantage of those days when it's like this, when it's just blessed with the opportunity to get out here, to get your hands dirty, to have fun doing it. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check us out on Steam. It. We're always posting on there. Ring the notification bell so when we update our next videos, you guys can see them. James Prigioni on Talk We. Ow.